Hey, what's up, NYB community? This is your guy, Ron Brooks, man. Welcome to episode 303 of the Minding Your Business podcast, entrepreneurship, real estate, trending news. There's no business like minding your own. Man, I'm excited. This room was recorded actually on Clubhouse uh, in the Fight for Your Business room, uh, curated by Mr. Jay Handler and uh, his entire team, man. Definitely shout out to them. We had a room full, man. I got a chance to moderate uh, the conversation, uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And so what you're going to listen to here is part one uh, of that conversation. It's going to be broken up into two parts. So episode 304 uh, will actually be part two, but this episode 303 will be part one of this conversation. And what you have to look forward to is uh, some introductions from some of the great moderators in the room and and some discussion. I got a little spicy uh, for a little bit, but uh, some discussion around uh, kind of starting up your business. Uh, also discussion around courses, uh, that sort of thing with people. And then a, a real good discussion around coaching and mentorship. Uh, that was really dope, man. Uh, some, some good insight came from that. So definitely check it out. And uh, as always, you can go to champ10k.com uh, to connect with any of the episodes of the Minding Your Business podcast, as well as schedule a time uh, with me uh, to help grow and edify your business in the direction that you see fit. So with no further ado, let's get right to it. Which are in my bio. So happy to be here today and looking forward to the conversation, Ron. I'll pass the baton back to you. Excellent. Thank you, Jackie. We, we're always great to have you in rooms and always appreciate your support. And, and then the rooms that you curate are dynamic as well. So definitely follow Jackie as she resonates with you. Uh, Darren, go ahead. Introduce yourself. Hello there. My name is Darren Shaw. I'm a trainer from the UK. I teach people something called neurolinguistic programming. I teach entrepreneurs how to get even more excellent with the communication skills, uh, sales skills, um, these sorts of things. Um, and today I'm a assistant moderator helping you, sir. Um, back to you, Ron. Yeah, Darren, I appreciate your support, man. And that, that's one of the great things about Clubhouse is you can get warm introductions like this, like Jay made with myself and Darren. And now we're here moderating a room. Look, just that quick. <laughs> All in the span of about five minutes. And so that's the kind of the power of these social audio apps and the ability to connect with great people. And as Darren mentioned, he's in London and I'm here in Memphis, Tennessee in the States. And so we're able to connect. And Darren, I definitely look forward to uh, connecting with you some more. And I appreciate your support uh, here in this room, my friend. Uh, Bali Paul, why don't you unmike? Good good morning, good afternoon to you and uh, give an introduction. Hey, great to be here, Ron, and good to meet you. Hi, Jackie, how are you? Hi, everybody. Yeah, Bally Paul, as the name says, I'm from England, but I live in Bally. I retired or semi-retired out here in 2020. And um, I am, I'm a sales coach and a copywriter. I empower new start and early stage solopreneurs and coaches with the mindset, skill set, and tool set of sales success. There's three things I, I, I custom design with them that's their mindset how they think strategy for thinking right secondly lead generation how they generate leads for perfect clients that will buy from them and thirdly their sales process their sales conversation how to inspire people to buy from them so that they can build a successful cash generating business that lasts doesn't survive it thrives and that they can live a fulfilling life and have a business that fulfills them totally. So that's what I, why I'm here is to help uh, anybody who needs help with anything sales and persuasion. And it's great to be here. Thank you, Ron. Yay, Bally Paul. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. That's a great rundown. Uh, and I, I love what stuck out to me is the mindset and conversations. And we want to dig a little bit more into that because uh, those are kind of two key areas uh, when you think of any level of business, uh, but certainly in the startup phase is your mindset, how you're thinking. And then also as you cascade down, what type of conversations, how many of those are you having? Are you having them with the right people? And how are those uh, progressing? So I, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. Gordon, uh, great to see you, my friend. I uh, appreciate you being on stage and, and modding with us. Uh, Unmike and introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Gordon Morse. I'm uh, dialing in from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, 30-year Wall Street veteran, leading some of the great sales teams in financial services history. And for the last 
seven years have been leveraging my talents into venture creation. Um, not venture capital, venture creation. Um, I work really in two areas, experiential retail uh, and medical technology. And uh, getting ready to really ramp up with a company that has a incredible patent portfolio to deliver what's called 3D Vector 12 lead uh, ECG technology, echocardiograms, anytime, anywhere. It's a revolutionary kind of breakthrough uh, patent portfolio. We're just waiting on FDA approval. Hopefully we get it. Um, and if we do, uh, you know, it's off to the races. So I'm happy to be here uh, to support you and, and to help any way I can with entrepreneurs. Thanks. Awesome, Gordon. I appreciate you, my man. Thank you so much. And you definitely uh, you have a wealth of experience we want to dig into and, and help some folks uh, today. So definitely appreciate you, man. Um, if you see the link that's been uh, attached there up top, you could definitely click on that. Uh, Accelerate your business growth. Uh, that's the Jay Handler Network. Uh, Jay here uh, is uh, one of the principals or the principal here for the Fight Your Business Club. Definitely click on that. He's got uh, an event coming up in November you're going to want to be a part of. So go ahead and click and be part of that network. Uh, definitely be sure to do that. Uh, is it, I, I, I'm a butcher names today, so <laughs> forgive me. Is it Analy? Am I saying that correctly? Hi, uh, we're on so nice to meet you and welcome to our uh, stage. My name is Anna Lee. Anna Lee. And uh, yes, I'm the host of the Sparking the Change podcast where I have conversations with people who are sparking the change they want to see in the world. And I'm also pre-revenue on a new business, working with Jay as my business coach and uh, looking forward to launching that a bit later on in the year. And Ali, I love that. Um, and as a fellow podcaster, I had to give you the air horn there for that. I love uh, any of the podcasters at whatever stage that you're at. Um, what's the name of your podcast again, Annalie? I just want to make sure I capture that down. Sparking the Change. It hasn't Ooh. launched yet officially um i've been traveling and haven't had stable internet but we've almost got the studio set up uh to start recording yep absolutely well no that is great uh Annalie. once that is uh uh set up and you start recording episodes definitely make sure that we know about it uh so that we can support and uh you know help uh you know kind of grow your audience and your listenership uh definitely for sure so thank you for being here Thank you, Ron. And if anybody is sparking the change they want to see in this world, then I'd love to interview you. Hey, love that. So you got an opportunity here to be uh, on a podcast, which is, I'll tell you that as a podcaster, I'm a little bit biased, but um, you get a chance to be part of a podcast. That's a great way when you talk about even starting up uh, to get awareness out there about what you're doing um, is to, to do a little bit of podcast marketing and be a guest uh, on some different podcasters, uh, podcast. So thank you for that. Cassie, hey, how are you? Uh, go ahead and unmic and uh, introduce yourself. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in this wonderful world. I'm hailing from sunny Houston, Texas. Um, my name is Casey Williams, owner and operator of Casey Williams, Inc. That's I-N-K, player of words. And I help you get organized in your office stuff. So really what I do is I help you with your writing projects that have been sitting on your desk or sitting in your computer or in your mind bugging the snot out of you saying, you've got to do your social media. You've got to do a blog. You've got to do these emails. You've got to do fill in the blank of whatever your writing project is that is driving you bonkers and you don't know what to do. You don't have the time for that is where I step in and help you get back on track. My name is Casey. And again, I am a player of words. Have a great day. Oh, a player. I love that. A player of words. And, and in sunny Texas, no doubt. Um, my operations manager is actually at a conference right now as I speak uh, in San Antonio. So he's enjoying, uh, I guess, some parts of sunny Texas, at least hopefully. Um, but uh, Cassie, thank you so much for being here. We look forward to hearing more uh, from you. 
Uh, again, I'm terrible with names. Uh, is it Celeste? I'll help you out. Just call me CC, friend. Oh, you actually got it right, I think. Did I get it yeah, right the first yeah. time? <laughs> yeah. Hey! <laughs> Love it. I nailed it. Um, so, no, go ahead and unmic and uh, introduce yourself. Yay. Well, first of all, I really have been trying to hide in the audience lately. <laughs> but Jay is always <laughs> like, uh uh-uh, uh, get your butt up here. So, shout oh, out to no Jay. hiding He's in here. One of my favorite people. <laughs> He's one of my favorite people. So, I love you, Jay. Um, hey, Ron. Hey, everybody in the room. I'm going to make this real brief. So, I see a lot of new people, actually, and I can't wait to hear from y'all. I'm Celeste. I live in Portland, Oregon. I've been an entrepreneur for the last 11 years. Um, I have a service based business that recently reached. Oh, this has always been a trigger word for me, but I'm so happy to use it now. Uh, this year, we reached a little over 100K in revenue, so I'm so happy to celebrate that. Um, and our secret sauce is all about SEO. I learned how to rank my business number one on Google, and that brings us over 50% of our new clientele. Uh, so I just love talking about marketing and sharing my experience. So I'll land the plane there. The rest is in my bio, and I will pass the mic. Awesome. I love that. Hey, listen, congratulations on reaching that $100,000 in revenue marker. That is um, really monumental. If you think about how many businesses don't reach that level, right? Um, So, you know, you should be proud, you and your team, uh, of your accomplishments and and the continued growth uh, that you experience with the action that you're taking. So we definitely appreciate you being here. And uh, yeah, yeah, definitely do your dance. (laughs) I love your PTR. Um, yeah, so no, definitely be here. We look forward to hearing some more from you. Uh, Janice, go ahead and uh, Mike. Uh, greetings to you and uh, introduce yourself. Hey, Ron, and good morning, everyone. Great day. Uh, I, I'm happy you called me Janice because I've been having kind of a, um, with a, a Pete and Keel adventure here on Clubhouse. For some reason, I've been being called Janice a lot and... You know, I've never had that before I got here on Clubhouse. So I'm thinking Pete and Keel, you know, you can, you all can look up Pete and Keel, um, school substitute teacher and you'll get it. You get it. It's really, really funny. But yes, it is Janice, Janice Coleman. And I'm here in New Jersey and it's actually sunny here in New Jersey today, which is amazing. I am an executive coach and career coach. Uh, by profession. I'm also a keynote speaker and an author, and I help people to live out loud, playful out, and be invincible in their space by finding satisfaction in the marketplace. So if you, if a person, you know, is in the midst of a transition and I do and needs all and would need all things career um, and executive collateral, such as a bio, an updated LinkedIn profile, resumes, interview skills, negotiation skills. That's my general space. And also, I'm, and I also have an extensive background in leadership training. So I, I have traversed the marketplace for about 23 years in this particular profession. I absolutely love what I do. And I prepare people to perform. I relinquish the mic. Janice, I love that. Listen, I have an aunt named Janice. And so that's how I was able to pick it up. But I'm, I'm nailing names so far today, uh, which is very unusual. Please don't take that as the norm because <laughs> usually I'm, I'm very bad. But Janice, thank you so much for your share and introduce yourself and for being here and look forward to hearing more from you. Uh, Will, my man, go ahead and on mic. Uh, greetings to you. Introduce yourself. Greetings, greetings, and I am jealous of uh, Celeste and Janice because right now it is 17 degrees in my neck of the woods. Oh. And you probably asking, where's that at? Well, guess what? I am at the greatest and the greatest province, which is Quebec, Canada, Montreal. Bonjour. Hey. Merci, comme ça va? Yeah. I said, what's going on, beautiful people? I see some familiar faces up in the building. This is what that is. And I went from pain to purpose and from trauma to triumph. I facilitated a supportive space for those of us that have survived trauma and parental neglect to find healing and common bonds. We will collaborate to learn new coping skills and find ways to persevere and rise mentally, emotionally, physically, and financially. Just recently, 
one of my most achievement, my latest achievement, I was featured in, in the Q Magazine, Volume 103, the purple issue, November 2022. Go check it out. And also, I had the distinct pleasure and honor to be on the executive of uh, 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 Youth Indigo. I'm the chief global outreach. I'm a certified transformative life coach, certified fitness trainer for over 26 years, certified financial advisor, mindset coach for professional athletes, and I am an author, conference keynote speaker, and a former firefighter, first responder. Shout out to all my firefighters, first responder out there. So, as you can see, I have a plethora of background in uh, service because I'm a servant and a great leader is a servant but more importantly what I really like about it, my journey is the fact that I have found power in the pain and I'm turning my trauma to triumph by helping other men to come from the shadow into the light to be a better husband a better father a better friend more importantly to cultivate a better relationship with themselves. On that note, I will pass the mic back to the next person. Just making sure that you don't grab it too quickly because it's still hot. Back to you, Ron. This is when I'm out. Well, you got it hot, man. I appreciate it. Even though you're you're freezing uh, up there in Quebec, I uh, love what you had to share, man. I, I and definitely appreciate you being uh, right here and look forward to hearing more uh, from you. Uh, we're here. Uh, this is the Minding Your Business with Ron Brooks. That's myself, uh, Room, uh, part of the Fight for Your Business Club. Uh, again, for those of you that are just coming in or listening on replay, definitely make sure you click on the house above. Join the club. Be a part of great people. You said you wanted to network with uh, great dynamic people well here's your chance uh definitely do that follow people as they resonate with you here on stage moderators speakers and uh beyond so we want to continue a few mod uh introductions we've had some great people come in the room and then we want to get into our topic let's uh talk through kind of the startup phase we've we've heard from some people that have reached milestones in revenue um we'd love to hear some of their story and and let's answer some questions for those of you that have uh businesses and you're in your younger phase and we've got some people here to help you out with that i'm gonna turn the mic over to andy greetings to you my man uh unmic and introduce yourself Andy, are you there? Andy going once. Andy fell asleep. He needs his coffee. Um, Tavion, how you doing? We'll come back to Andy, but Tavion, how you doing? Greetings to you, and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Absolutely. Well, hey, doing phenomenal, Ron. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you uh, holding this space down as well. Hope everyone's having a phenomenal uh, morning and week. Um, and before I even get into introduce myself, guys, if you could please make sure you're following the club, fight for your business, uh, follow Jay, follow Ron, um, and like Ron said, you know, follow anybody that may resonate with you. Uh, but yeah, just a little bit about me. So my name is Tavion, and, um, and what I do is I specialize in helping online coaches, consultants, and business owners learn how to gain clients on Instagram and Facebook by using proven marketing strategies. Uh, so whether that may be content strategy, conversion strategy, building an organic following community helping you build that pipeline, ad strategy, so on and so forth. Uh, that is where I come into play. And, you know, um, I'm in introduce, or I'm sorry, not introduce, but I've had the pleasure when I do uh, get to introduce, introduce myself, I typically, you know, share like what I do. But, you know, just as a quick takeaway uh, for what got me into this and why it actually aligns with my mission is, truth be told, I want to help everybody, you know, be their most authentic self, you know, especially for those who have been in my spaces, those who have been in my rooms. Um, you'll know that being authentic is something I completely, I, I, I talk about endlessly being unique online, you know, standing out from the crowd. Um, and that's exactly what I do with my current clients, people who are interested in working with, working with me, whatnot is I don't think, how can I just make you look like everybody else, but how can I help you stand out from the rest? Uh, because at the end of the day, authenticity, authenticity, true and good energy, uh, is really going to help you win in the end of the day when it comes down to business. So, um, but yeah, you know, I'd never really shared that before, but something in my heart told me to share that today of really what got me started in that business. Um, because I'm just very passionate about helping people, um, you know, expose their true selves out there in the world, you know, cause I believe that everybody is that best kept secret and I believe everybody is great at what they do. So, uh, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. So, um, glad to connect with anybody and everyone. Um, and with that being said, uh, I will land my plane, uh, land the mic there. So, Ron, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you. 
Tavion, I appreciate the energy and the the passion in which you speak, man. Hey, I, I think there is a um, uh, someone who got uh, I think uh, escorted out of Skechers yesterday could probably use your help. <laughs> probably could use some of your energy today uh, with Mister West. But um, Tavion, <laughs> I appreciate you, man, being here, and uh, look forward to hearing some more from you, my man. Uh, Stack, what's going on, my man? Uh, go ahead. Uh, greetings to you. Uh, Unmike and introduce yourself. Let's go, Ron. First time meeting you, my brother. Hey, you I love it, man. I'm feeling great, man. It's good to uh, let's go, be let's heard. go, let's go, let's go. What's up? Let's, let's do it. Up, right? Let's do it. Look, if you guys don't know who I am, I'm Stack Pack. I own a worldwide digital marketing empire, and it's attached to a magazine. And we're about to launch the second one, so it'll be the second. One, we're on fire right now. I'm heavily invested into NFTs, crypto, the metaverse. And I'm also teamed up with some big, big, big brands as well on and off this app. And it's really, really important for you guys to know to take these relationships and put them in real motion. Don't just follow people just because they said something cool. Don't just follow people just because they, they look cool. No, follow up with these relationships and take it to the next level. You know how many people we done put in motion? You know how much money we done made off the app and built? We build every time. Come on. Look, last night something amazing happened to me, right? You never know what's going to happen. You never know what type of phone calls you're going to get. You never know what type of opportunity is going to fall in your lap. But guess what? You got to put yourself there. You want to be with the winners? You got to chill with the winners. You want to have the passion? You got to be around the people that's got the passion. You want to close sales? You got to be around the people that got the sales. You want to level up? You got to be with the people that's already leveled up. And that's what I do. I surround myself with the best of the best. And if you guys know how I move, you guys know how I move. I surround myself with people that's already been doing this, already can train me, get mentorship. That's been in this 20, 30, 40 years before me, right? And you know what I do? I get that information and I put it into my business and I build big ass teams, big ass networks. They already know. Stack Pack Young Wolf, if you're not familiar, Go to my Instagram, <laughs> see what's going on, see the type of people I'm connected with, and see what I do. Because when I really say what I do, it's, it's you know what it is? It's being real. You know what I mean? If you really following up with these connections and really connecting with people, you gonna it's going to show. Your light is going to be so, so bright that it's going to be too, 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 too much just to keep in a little box. So I appreciate you, Ron. It's my first time meeting you. You know, I'm always in this club with Jay and supporting, so. Stack pack, young wolf. Let's keep going. You right? Hey, I love Let's it. Ah, I love that. That's the energy that we're talking about. We're going to start up and we're going to mind our business. Let's bring the passion. Let's bring the energy, man. Stack, I appreciate it. You're doing super dope things uh, out there and glad to have you uh, as part of that stage, man, uh, this stage and, and being a part of this club and, and this discussion. But that's what it's about. It's about having some passion, having some energy. This is an NPR. This isn't a dry eyes commercial, <laughs> right? We're here. Come on, man. We're in, in the fight for your business club. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. Let's get to it. I'm starting to sound like Nelson now. Um, fight for you. I, you know what else, Ron? What's people that? Don't, you know, let me say something else. People don't fight for their business, too. Mm, you know what they'll talk do? About they'll, it. they'll let it sink. They'll let it sink, right? They'll let their businesses sink. Don't let your business sink. A lot of people don't know who they're talking to, what type of doors to get in. Make sure you surround yourself with that stuff. It don't matter. Don't, don't be shooting a blank target. Please don't. Load up. Get ready. You never know what type of passion is going to come your way, but you got to believe in this journey. I run across too many opportunities. You know what? I run across too many entrepreneurs, right, Ron? You know what they do? They don't right. believe in themselves, you know? You know? Mm. They'll be like, man, why? Why not me? Because it ain't your time yet, man. Patience is a virtue. You have patience, you're going to appreciate the speed when it comes. A lot of people don't know that they, that they got to have patience before the speed comes. You got to wait. Sometimes those relationships are not meant for you. Sometimes it's not ready for you to make that relationships and get into those doors because sometimes it can be, you know, uh, a downfall for your business or not the right decision at that time. And sometimes the universe puts that out there for you, but you don't understand and you think it's failure, but it's not failure. You know what it is? Mm. See the universe telling you, hold on, hold on. Now, right, Ron, I got so much stuff going on, man, down to the companies, down to everybody I help on every single platform on the planet that you never know, man. You got to believe, man. You got to have that fire inside your soul. But a lot of people don't know that, man. They'll let that. Ron, back to you, man. Stack. Yeah, Stack, man. I love that. Great energy, man. Great passion and great words of wisdom 
uh, by the way. You got to believe. And hey, we're going to get into that, man, for sure, because that's a big part of it. If you're going to have your business, you have to believe, right? Before anybody else can, you have to. So, man, I appreciate that stack, man. That's, that's super dope. My man, Eric, man, Eric is across many stages. He's moderating rooms. I, I've really come to admire um, the way that he uh, engages with people, the way he drives conversation, uh, really um, uh, you know, proactive. And, and I love the love that he shows for people, man. He, this is a brother that showed me a lot of love. We need to know each other. Um, but you know, now we've been able to recognize each other in rooms and have conversations. So I appreciate that. Many of you guys are, are familiar with Eric. But Eric, man, go ahead, please. I'm Mike, man. Introduce yourself, brother. Well, good morning. Good morning to everybody. Everybody, I want to understand what in the hell is going on here, Ron. You hijacked this. You hijacked the club, and they're running it. Hey, it's like a takeover, baby. That- we got Memphis takeover. Wow. Big Memphis. Right, so, and you got stacked the pack up in here too. How you get stacked in here? And we yeah, got- man. Jeez. We got inmates I running the asylum, baby. One little bitty tiny thing. I want to. I just want to wordsmith one little tiny thing because what Stack just said, that's the jam. But we're not worried about failure. We got to hurry the hell up, Stack. I'm not waiting, bro. I can't wait. I got to get out there and build it. I got to build it, and I got to get that feedback because everything I build is not going to work just exactly the way I want it. Some stuff's going to break. Some people not going to be with the jam. But we got to get out there and we got to move because it's a. You got to be about that action. Just like our my girl Diamond says, right? Mindset, skill set, action set. Wrap it in the heart set, but fail faster because failure is feedback. And I got to get that feedback. I need it not now, but right now because I got big things to do. Can't hang around and wait. And that just depends where we're at in the journey because we're going to have a lot of these versus room talks. And I just want to tell you, Ron, this is Eric Haras coming to you live from the capital of the world here in New York City. For the price of tea in London, find out why they think London is the capital. They better ask somebody. We're running things over here. I'm with Stack. Get up, get out there, and stop making excuses. There ain't, we don't have a resource problem. We got a connection problem. And that's what we mm. do right here. Anything you want to know about me is in the bio. Ron, back to you. Hey, Eric, listen, man, that's bombs dropping, man. You and Stack back to back. Yeah, with all the folks here on stage, man, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. He said, hey, man, it's time out for excuses. You got to get it. Let's get it done. We don't have a resource problem. (laughs) You know what I mean? We have a connection problem. I love that. Man, some great quotes uh, that are being dropped here today. You're here, the Minding Your Business Room with myself, Ron Brooks. Fight for your business club. Follow the club. Go ahead and do that. Take care of that. Handle that business. Um, That's part of your Minding Your Business right there. You see the link here for the Jay Handler Network. Go ahead and tap in uh, with this network. He's got an event coming up in November. Let's get to it. Um, again, follow uh, who's resonated with you, and uh, let's keep the thing going. We got the chat going. Let's get the shares up. Let's going on. We got 18 shares. You know, again, Eric just said, we don't have a resource problem. We got a connection problem. Right, so what's our problem? Let's connect people to what we're talking about and what we're doing. Let's, let's get them in tune with the movement. So let's get the shares up. Share it out to the hallway. Uh, share it to your social media platforms. And uh, let's get into it. Let's get into a conversation. We've got some speakers here um, on stage, uh, some great folks, some of these folks I'm familiar with. we got people in the audience. So let's talk a little bit um, from those early days from a startup standpoint. And it, it's been mentioned about, uh, you know, Eric mentioned mindset, uh, you, know, you know, all the way to action set, you know, mindset, skill set, action set. Um, you know, Stacks mentioned some things. You know, we've got some folks on stage who have been driving revenue. So let's get into it. Let's, you know, let, you know, what, if we had to get into what's one of the most important pieces when you're starting up your business that you need to have? Um, what, I got you, Ron. I'm going right in. Let's go on, Ron. Structure. If you guys don't got no structure, it's over. A lot of people Free. don't know how to build a business. You got to build it first before you even dive into the field. You guys want to get these LLCs because you hear it and it looks good. But no, you haven't done the structure. Do your due diligence. Please do your research. A lot of people are jumping in these fields just because they've seen their friends making a lot of money. No, no, it's not your field. Maybe it can be your field, but do your research. Do your research. A lot of people are just doing it just for a quick money grab. No, that's how you're going to fail and sink. You need structure. You need people that done that business already or did it bigger than you so you can learn from them and be bigger than them or even bigger than you've imagined. 
But you can't just get out there and do something. If you don't have structure, it starts from the bottom up, bottom up, build up. And if you have to get other people on your team and do partnership, oh yeah, wrong partnerships. What am I? What am I talking about? Partnerships. Mm. You need partnerships in everything you do. I thought I was a one man band, right, Ron? I'm like, man, I could do this on my own, bro. I'm filled with passion, fire. They can't see me, right? But yeah, man, I need partnerships. I need big ass teams. I need people with other networks so we can get in other doors that I'm not capable to get into. So, Ron, structure, structure from the ground up, build. Hey, Stack, I love it. Matter of fact, very quickly, if you were to go back and search Black Enterprise Magazine, uh, this is going back to probably 2016. Uh, I was one of the early openers of as a black operator of a co-working space here in Memphis. I called it Entre Memphis. You want to know why it's not here today? Um, the reason it's not here today is because I didn't do what Stack just mentioned. Right. I didn't partner. What did I do? I was you know, running the bank. I was running all over the place. I still was in my bank role position and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, I was putting money into it, but I, I didn't build the partnerships. Right. I didn't build a business structure. Everything centered around me running around like a chicken with my head cut off. Right. And what happened? All right. Eventually. Right. The money runs dry. All right. I've got no part. I've got no leverage. Right. I'm trying to drive business. I'm, I'm the one man band. I'm running around doing it all. Right. Everything. And I and, and run. you know, it's crazy. Run, and you're not wrong for doing that, bro, because we can. We're capable. But we need to learn how to work smarter and not yes. harder. My brother, walk and work smarter and not harder because you can use a team and still work, man. Have the money work for you when you not work for the money. Let's get into it. Let's go. Yep. Love it. And that's what I mean. Hey, Ron. Go ahead, please jump in. Hey, Ron, it's Janice. Um, you know, and so in the book, E-Myth and this E-Myth Revisited, Michael Gerber talks about the structure. And when I first started in business, I thought that just everybody on the planet should know how good I was. And, you know, why weren't they knocking at my door? Why did I have to knock at door, their door? And, you know, after six years of building frustration or mounting frustration, I got to the place of where I had to pull back and say, what do I need? And just like what Stack said, structure. If you don't have an infrastructure, if you don't have a foundation, your building is going to be condemned. It's just not going to make it through the weather, through the winter, through anything. So we have to have a foundation, which means putting in the work so that we can build it and then we can work on our business instead of in our business. But it takes time and it takes patience and patience and speed. Like Stack said, again, patience and speed for me has become my, my power twin. Because I have to understand that I have to be at the ready all the time, but I still have to be focused. And so there's there's that dichotomy of I need to hurry up, hurry up, but I need to wait, I need to wait. And so we just have to be in motion with that in order to keep it going. But structure, 100%. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Structure, structure without sales means nothing. The number one reason companies fail is lack of revenue. Facts. Number one reason. Let's go. Yep, let's go. Right, now, let's go. Now, Get now, to the let damn bag. Drop, I want to drop two statistics on you because I deal in data. I don't deal in intuition. I think running a business on intuition is an absolute recipe for failure. Running a business based on data and knowledge will empower you to succeed. But I want to drop two things on you. 94% of all businesses created will never hit a million in revenue. 99% of all tech businesses created will never hit a million in revenue. So I agree with all of you. It takes time. It takes patience. But if you don't know how to sell, your infrastructure is worth nothing. If you don't know how to close, if you don't know how to pitch, if you don't know how to ask for the order, your infrastructure is worth nothing. So the infrastructure is only as good as the person selling because without selling, there's no business. That's a damn talk fact. About this, Eric, yeah. Eric, you All heard facts. him talk about the pitch part. The pitch exactly. part is important because a lot of people will let a lot of deals fall through because they don't, they don't even know what they want. They can't even, they don't even, 
Oh my God! If they guys are gonna pitch something, look, they can't pitch because they don't know who the hell are. Yes, you. If you if you're gonna pitch a product and you want someone to buy it, you have to be clear on the message. You have to be strong on the message. You have to be knowing who you're talking to. You heard them. You have to know what you're talking about. Stand on your message. Pitch has to be clear and has to be direct. Who you help, why you help, and what you do, and what you serve, and how you gonna help a damn problem. Stop playing with this business shit. Stop playing. Stop playing, man. I think part of the issue, I'd love to go back to this, and Stack, you can attribute to this, is that the, the collaborating with others, I think that's a big deal. And definitely, I, first of all, I want to build on what Stack said. you got to have structure. And in order to do that, you got to have a mentor. How the hell are you going to find out what structure is if you don't have someone that you can rely on, someone you can trust? And I found that with some folks in this room. And in addition to that, <clears throat> I don't know about y'all, but I love collaborating. And why? Because I know I don't know it all. And what we're going to go to the folks who do. So September 1st was close. Labor Day, what we do, we have a collaboration day, the first annual collaboration summit for Labor Day. And what we do, we highlight and we propel others up and we lift up and we don't take people down. And so based on that, all we can do is just create these relationships. And yeah, pitching and, and infrastructure, absolutely, 100%. And continue those relationships with one another so that we have someone to turn to when we have questions without being scared and sitting in the corner afraid to speak. Because if you sit in that silent fear, who's going to listen when you stand to speak? Thanks, let me share. Yep, love that. Woo, Dr. Man. Laura on fire. Yep, I love right. that. I love that. Uh, listen, man, th this is tremendous. Dr. Laura, you touched on something that I want to continue to expound on, um, but we didn't get a chance to get your introduction, so I want you to introduce yourself, and then Kareem, we want her to introduce herself as well, and then we want to keep this conversation going. Let's do it. Go ahead, Dr. Laura, introduce yourself, and then Kareem. Absolutely. I am a transformational mind shift coach, a nationally certified and licensed professional counselor, a three-time international best-selling author, and a global storyteller. My background includes working for the Pentagon and the U.S. Army, facilitating a program for family advocacy to help prevent, educate, and implement uh, domestic violence, child abuse, and um, sexual assault prevention over five countries, 22 army installations, and over 100,000 soldiers and civilians. And what I do now is I help propel women and to step out of self-sabotage so that they can live better lives for their personal and professional trajectory so that they can live happier, better, and allow their family members to do so as well. My background does include a PhD in child development and family studies and two masters in sociology and counseling. And that said, now is when I'm gaining my wisdom. That was my education. This is my life and my wisdom that I'm gaining from y'all in this room. So that's what I do. Love it. No, appreciate that, Dr. Laura. It's always great to be on stage with you. And uh, Kareem, do you want to introduce yourself uh, real quick? Uh, always good to see you. Come on, sis. She's she's West Coast, and I bonded her up because that's my little sister, and I run deep with with Kareem. But uh, she might be tied up right now, man. Yeah, no worries, my man. Hey, if, if she's your sister, she's family, man. So definitely, uh, she's family. That's facts. Yeah. No doubt. So let's keep this thing going. Um, Dr. Laura, something you mentioned on, let me ask you, know, you guys on the stage, how important is mentorship in business? I see this so much in with what I do with business owners that are coming with funding, right? And oftentimes, you know, they've got great ideas. They may have great skill sets coming out of the workforce, but they're not around business people. They're not around like the people here on this stage and, and in these uh, progressive rooms in this app, right? You know, and I'll be I'll keep it completely real because I'm in kind of low to moderate income areas. You know, they're they're around the homies in the hood. Right. They're around the people that's you know, they, they're not trying to really progress their business. Right. They they haven't developed that type of mindset. They don't have that type of outlook. And so those are the people that they're constantly around. And so they get these negative thoughts put in their, their head. You know, well, Ron, you can't do that. You don't know anybody who does that. You know, nobody's been successful in that. You can't do that. You know what I mean? They get all these negative things. So how important is my, not, not so much mindset, but mentorship uh, when it comes to starting your business and having a good mentor? Everything. It's everything. I mean, I came from an academic background with the government. I don't know nothing about starting a business. My, my clients are students who would fail classes if they didn't come or soldiers who get kicked out of the military. I don't have to get clients. Everything. I got to be around people who know what they're doing. I didn't. Hey, Ron, yeah. just from, just in the, from life, it's important. And, and just like where you are right now, I was born and raised in the inner city in Philadelphia. And I was propelled out of my normal environment into a high school that gave me access to different, different thoughts and different people. And so my trajectory changed based on 
the people who were teaching me and training me and pulling me and pushing me. And then when I got into professional development, the first person I met via a book was Zig Ziglar. And that just propelled me into a whole different world. And as Les Brown would say, OQP, only quality people, because we have become like the five people that we hang out with the most. And mentorship, the strategic network, mentorship and and training, that's your strategic network. Those are the people who are going to help you to see for the future. So if you have, if you don't have people who have been there, done that, and can help you to know how to get there, then, then you're going to squander. You're going to spend so much time. It, it's, it's going to be impossible, well, not impossible to keep up or impossible to catch up, but the shortcut to success is good mentorship. Are you okay? Oh, sorry. I wanted to hop in really quick. Um, So, Janice. Oh, sorry. Somebody else. Yeah, so let's uh, then uh, Eric. Okay, I'm going to make it real quick because I want (laughs) to kind of be vulnerable here. So, when I first started in business, I used to kind of get upset because I would look around at people and be like, oh, you should get a mentor. And I have a mentor and mentor, mentor, right? And I would reach out to certain people I looked up to and they would, you know, kindly be like hey you know I don't have a lot of time and it would make me upset and I would feel like you know take that personally but then I heard someone mention something uh, that a mentor finds a mentee and a student finds a coach and that really opened up my brain to something you know a lot of us are out here just whining and crying about how we don't have a mentor because number one we're not understanding that most successful people I'm sorry but they don't have time to sit here and mentor you, right? If you happen to find someone that wants to invest that time into you, you are very blessed. But instead of looking at a single person as like this all knowing God that you need to be your mentor, you can listen to a podcast. Janice mentioned you can uh, read a book. You can hop on Clubhouse now. I mean, there are so many different ways to find mentorship uh, other than this traditional person who is your mentor. Um, And last but not least, um, I kind of touched on this, but a lot of us need to stop Sorry. Uh, To land the plane, yeah, a lot of us need to stop uh, looking for (laughs) these mentors and just invest in a coach. Like, come on. It's kind of like nowadays, people want to sidestep that. Talk about it. (laughs) <laughs> people want to sidestep that and go the free route, but you know what I'm going to say too? If you, if you got a real mentor, you got a real, real, real mentor that's trying to look out for you, you're not going to pay a dollar. Everyone that has ever poured into me that was been doing big million dollar dreams and been made millions of dollars, I never had to pay them a penny to pour into me because they seen my value and seen I know what I was doing on my journey. So all they did was uplift me so that way I could go... Part better in a better yeah, direction yeah. so if you're getting yeah, charged yeah, yeah if you're yeah. getting charged and by a mentor so-called mentor and that's not really i think it's a transactional type of thing because everyone that's you know powerful that's ever poured into me and still to this day right now has never charged me a penny or a dollar in anything everything's been organic relationship building and um heart-to-heart connection so that's how i like to build i don't really like to pay for coaches and mentors if you don't want to you know, show me what to do. I know the universe is going to tell me what to do um, as a spiritual being anyway. So it doesn't matter. Yep. No, Thanks definitely. St- Go ahead, Eric. In there, Stack, if that was, yeah, yeah, Stack, we want, we're going to have time to level you up, bro. Because this is what's the least. What you need to do is not be, be a little slow to roll to give that advice until you got the success to back it. Because if you've gone out there oh, and you I busted your knuckles, slow down, <laughs> slow down my turn, slow down my turn, slow down my turn. See, what Zach's talking about is about getting out there and he's on that move. What you guys are not putting together is let's back it up to Gordon. Gordon's a man who knows his numbers. Gordon's a man who's planned, pre-planned, and executed. Gordon's a man that knows that tonight if I need to eat, I need to take my ass outside and sell something. Because you can stand up in your pretty little brand. We did this in the versus room the other night. And you can play, play, play with the little bit of pennies you got, with your little bit of fun things and your stickers and your books and your things. But you're not making a business. That's a little hobby. It's a little side hustle. That's a little play. You get with Stack the Pack as he's trying to gas you up here right now about that about that hacking on the mentor thing. We're not trying to pay for nothing. Everything's going to come to me because I'm going to feel it. Gordon, 
you better straighten these folks out before they take the last little pennies they got and burn them. Because if you don't get serious about your system, if you don't step into your reality, if you don't follow me to the VC rooms and understand what a real pitch is, you can't sit in here in the, in the beginning of business and act like you know what business is. The stack mm. the pack right there is talking about networking with power players. He's up in the house with uh, Cindy Stumpo. That's the, that's the mentorship he's talking about. He's talking about stack comes out and delivers to people because he sees a need in their business and he fills it and he connects on a network. And you know what he gets back? He gets the money back and he gets the, the mentorship back. And I want to throw this to Gordon because you know it's crazy. Eric, things. too, the mentorship is priceless, right? When you get that now, poor, now when stack, you're poor, let me, let me word, you up on this. Right yeah, now, yeah. let me let's let you understand. When you want to go learn about some real estate, and you want to 10x that mother. You're going to buy a ticket to the front row at Grant's event. If you're going to come and you're going to level up, at least you're going to find a mentor because a coach is a different deal. So you don't understand the difference. We got to get our definition straight. I'm going to throw it back to Rob because I hate it when it gets all mushy. Everybody's in there. And feeling. I love to respond after Ron. Yeah, but Eric, you can go I like ahead and wait until Gordon here. responds. Yeah. Back to you. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, definitely, Eric. Uh, Celeste, if you want to go ahead and respond, and then um, we want to get Nicholas in as well. So I usually don't do this because I'm like a very humble person, but, you know, if anybody wants to kind of validate my credibility, I can send you some receipts. I'll leave it there. But my point was, like, no, no, said, just tell us about it. You know, we're not no, looking to no, try to make a combat. I just tell us about the it. The backstory is that I could not find a mentor. So, what are you going to say to people who don't have access to quote unquote power players? Oh, you're not don't looking in the right place. Business. Let me you're not, you're you're not not in the right Hold on. One mic. One mic. One mic. One mic. Let me finish. Real quick. Thank yeah. you. Um, so what are we going to say to people who, you know, live in disadvantaged areas? They don't know how to network. They're trying to start a business. They cannot find a mentor. This is a very common thing that I hear. Keep in mind. You have a phone I'm in your the, hand and you are here. Eric, you found him. Eric, control. Control. Please yeah. let me finish. Yeah. Go ahead. Finish. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of people who have this problem. I had this problem. I was reaching out to people trying to be like, hey, I need a mentor. I need a mentor. I couldn't find anyone. My point was, number one, there are many other ways to get mentorship besides going to a single person and looking at them as like this person who's going to give you all this advice for free. There are books, podcasts. Now we have technology. We have so many avenues for this, right? And number two, do not let anyone, I don't care like what kind of <laughs> information we're talking about here. No person should be able to stop you from progressing in your business. If you're saying you cannot find any opportunities. You need a mentor. I think that that is false. If we're talking about a single person that you have to go to to get all this startup business advice, I don't think that that is fair. And it kind of discourages people who have had a similar experience to what I have had. Yes, they are out there that they cannot find these people to mentor them. So I'll land the plane there. Hey, so somebody, least you just do not understand what a mentor so is. is it is not a human. It's not one person. You clearly have a scarcity mindset, and it's a mindset issue. Uh, hey, one mic. One mic. Hey, hey, hold on. Hold on. Can I say oh, yeah, hello? Hold on. One mic. Can we yeah. talk hello? to one second? Oh, hold on. One, hello? one second. Hello? Ron, let's so, so, go real so, quick. Let's so talk. Hello? Uh, hey, so go ahead. I do believe that go ahead, I so. have to leave at the top of the hour. Hello? Okay. Yep. So go ahead, and then we want to get Nick in. So I'll just say here, so, I'm the altruist closer. Go ahead, Nick. I help you heal and feel the big deal. This is Satra. Hello. I'm the founder of the altruist closer. Hello, everyone. Nice to see everyone here. I help you heal and feel the big deal. That's you. You're a big deal. I help you find the areas that you leak, that you're leaking in, and find you the areas that you actually connect to to get the maximum connectivity. It's in yourself. The people that give you the most value, those are, that's your audience. I'm not for everybody. Everybody's not for me. That's okay. The point is, is when we live a life of love, we love the life that we live. And that's really the essence of what I do. That's what I'm here to do. I help you through Ayurveda, Tantra, numerology, and I help you find your resume in your algorithm. You can follow me over at thesecretenergy.com on the Mindful app. We have curation, things that actually work for you to give you the resonance that works best for you. And so it's not about me. It's about you. You're the big deal. I'll help you heal and feel the big deal. You. It's a shot for them speak. Zafal, thank you um, so much, Celeste, man. Celeste, can I offer? Can I offer Celeste? Uh, 
Hold on. I, I hear hey, her hey and Gordon. I want to hey, help her. Hey, Gordon, hold on. I want to help her with something. Okay. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Hey, Gordon, we want to get to you, definitely. Um, and so we want to get to you as well. Just hang tight. Let's do a quick reset. Darren, are you there to give us a quick reset? Hello, everyone. You are currently in the fight for your business clubhouse. And today we're talking about minding your business with Ron Brooks. Um, Ron is our guest speaker today, and we're talking about different aspects of minding your business, throwing questions out there so we can have discussions about things that we feel might be important towards uh, running your own business. I'm here as a background support at the moment because Jay is not able to be here. Um, please could you share this room out hallway? It not only does it help this clubhouse to continue to grow so more people know about it, but it also helps other people to know what kind of person you are, what kind of places and spaces you would like to hang out in. Um, I'm going to pass this mic back to Ron. Over to you, sir. Darren, thanks so much, my man. Appreciate it. Gordon, I'm going to come right back to you. I do want to give Soul a chance to uh, speak and, and kind of weigh in. So Soul and then uh, Gordon, and then we'll keep the thing rolling. Let's do it. Go ahead, Soul. Soul going once. Soul Detox. Hi, this hey. is Tamika. I'm the developer. Hey, hey. Soul Detox. This is my first time listening in. I love the Welcome. energy. Uh, yeah, I love the warrior spirit that I hear in a lot of the entrepreneurs who are on this platform. I'm appreciating all that's being said about mentors. It's opening my eyes to a lot of things because when I started out, I hired mentors. And when I was hearing from Stack, he was saying a mentor should not be hired. I paid these people thousands and thousands of dollars. And when the money was gone, they bounced. It was just, it was like a hireling. And so it wasn't a real mentor. It wasn't a real mentor. I lost, uh, I'm a stay at home mom. I homeschool my son. I invested like 15, almost $15,000, which was my personal savings. And when these people bounced, I was, just really without a business. I just had an idea. And so at this point, I am desiring and wanting a real mentor and not somebody who's a hireling. Because after hiring those people, I felt like I was back to square one. I know how to do what I do, but the business side of it, that's where I realized I got stuck because I don't understand business. There are people who have talents and abilities, but they don't understand the business world. And that was me. I've always been a person who worked in the corporate world I was accustomed to having the mentality of people of a person who's accustomed to working for their money as opposed as opposed to owning a business. So everything that's being said, I'm really appreciating it. I'm starting to see not starting to see when I lost my money. I, that definitely was a wake up call for me to see that there are definitely blind spots and areas that I needed to watch for because a tr true mentor, you shouldn't have to pour out your whole life savings. And then when the savings is gone, they're gone and you're back at square one. Thank you. Mm, so I thank you. The mic. No, thank you for that. And that's, you know, what we're really getting into, right? Um, you know, with, with myself here in Memphis, with my organization, we come across a lot of folks who describe what you just described, right? And, and even what Celeste was mentioning, like there are people who don't have that direct access, right? Even in, in so I serve in the area where I grew up, right? I didn't have that direct access. Going back to what um, I think Eric has left the room, but I think one of the points that Eric was making was, um, you know, getting it kind of in touch with those type of people and, and Clubhouse being one of those uh, platforms. However, again, there's people who don't have that type of access. They don't know, right? And so they have to be, they have to get around it. They have to be educated and they have to see the process. They have to see, you know, what we're talking about. They have to see it in action, right? Yeah. And so, like, so what you mentioned sometimes with mentors is they have great marketing funnels. They've got great, you know, that sort of thing. But um, they may be lack on results, right, and actually spending the time. Because when you think about the difference between coaching and mentorship, and Gordon, I promise you, brother, I'm coming to you. Um, when you think about the difference between coaching and mentorship, coaching, and I, I'll use a sports analogy for this because i played a lot of years of basketball um, your coach is w around performance. They're focused on your performance um, of you getting from a yeah. B to C and whatnot. A mentor is focused on your development. And so one of the things you have to help people realize is which or both that you need. There's some people who serve in both capacities. Some of my great quote unquote coaches that I had coming up were also great mentors. Some were better mentors than coaches. 
and, and some were better coaches than mentors, right? And if you talk to anybody who's played any level of kind of team competitive sports, um, they'll tell you that in their experience. So the same cascades the business that it's finding, you know, which one that, that you need. And then people that are in more kind of disinvested areas of our communities who aren't surrounded by the people in this room, right? They're, like I described earlier, uh, that's where organizations like mine come into play and many others uh, that you are familiar with that we come in. So our, our thing is, you know, we're different than the bank, right? The, when I was a banker, I didn't have, I didn't make the luxury of time to help people really in disinvested areas. I was helping people who already kind of had that knowledge and were kind of ready to go. They just needed to be able to express themselves enough to be able to get an approval from me and my underwriter, right? That's different than people in these low to moderate income areas who don't have a lot of that base knowledge and infrastructure and that access. Right. And so we're working to really kind of improve that, but it starts with that education, that support. And yes, you know, I think Eric would probably agree if he was back here that no, we're not looking to be powder puffs or softies with it, but you do have to be um, empathetic and you do have to understand and meet people where they are um, to, to really help them get there. And so, with that, just wanted to make that comment. Hey, Gordon, I want to turn it off to you because I think you want to follow up some with Celeste. Yeah. Um, first of all, I can uh, I, I totally understand uh, the idea that, you know, you got to search for them and you've got to reach out. And it's harder for people who uh, grew up in an area with that. I get that. I do. I respect that. Um, I, I look at my mentors. These are people who did not come to me and say, hey, man, like, you seem cool. I want to mentor you. Um, it evolved, but it started with me reaching out to them with a problem. I would never approach anyone and say, I need mentoring ever. What I would do is I would approach someone and say, I have a problem. I think you are ideal to help me figure it out and work it out. And here's my problem, right? Just lay it out there. And, um, and that's how the mentorships really started, uh, by me going back again. And then they kind of, after me reaching out and being proactive and asking for help specifically with a specific problem, the relationship evolved. And then they became kind of like integral parts of my life. So I would just uh, offer you, uh, it's your messaging. And asking for help with a specific issue, a specific problem. I think people want to help each other. I really do. Um, but you got to ask again. You may have to ask for the order multiple times, but uh, don't give up if you identify someone that you think could really be a good mentor for you. That's all. I love that share. Thank you. Yep. No, Gordon, thank you so much. Good uh, kind of level headed share. And, and we've had some great passion in the room. Um, I see stack is uh, left and Eric and some others, and we definitely appreciate that. That's always good and helps well around the room, but uh, we do want to also make sure that we're always being respectful and allowing everyone to uh, express their, uh, their thoughts and whatnot. So hopefully, uh, you know, those folks can come back and, and continue to engage with us. But nonetheless, we're going to continue this conversation because it's been really good. Uh, Janice, you're uh, blinking. So do you want to jump in? Yes, I do. Thank Please. you so much. And and you're right. This has been an amazing, uh, amazing conversation thus far. And I agree with, with the clarity that you brought, Ron, with regard to coaches versus, versus mentoring. And so, you know, sometimes they do the same thing, sometimes they don't. But often what I have found, I had the opportunity or have the opportunity to have Dr. Dennis Kembro, and I don't know how many people who know him. He is a, um, he is a university professor at Clark University. He is also a world-renowned author. I've had the pleasure of having him as my mentor um, for the past eight years. And, you know, mentoring is more relationship based. I believe is maybe it was Gordon who just said that Re mentorship is relationship based. It can extend into skills and things like that, but it tends to be about per about the full development of a person in the particular area. And then the coaching, you know, it, it because coaching has quote unquote 
become a profession, it, it you know, it borderlines what a mentor might do, but we, ha- we have to look at it. If a person is a coach by profession, they may not want to lean into mentoring because it can blur the lines for them from, from a revenue standpoint. So, but mentoring, Dr. Kimbrough and I were, I was working on a project. He was a part of that project. And afterwards, we were having different conversations. And based on those conversations, he offered to mentor me in the space of, of writing and publishing and things of that nature. And so that has been how the relationship has developed. I myself mentor and have mentored quite a few people, especially in the leadership space. Um, going from mid level to you know senior level to executive level on a on a personal a personal relationship uh, engagement not from not from the coaching space which is I'm a coach as well so there is that line and so both are needed I believe that both are needed coaching mentoring teaching all of these are part of the strategic network. So I just wanted to share that, add that to the conversation I referenced.